Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungson, Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us thank the Lord for gathering us this morning to celebrate this Holy Eucharist. Let us bring before the Lord our thanksgiving for all His blessings and graces. Let us present to the Lord all our prayers and petitions especially for our brothers and sisters who are sick and those who are suffering. And let us ask God's grace that we may always align our lives to His holy will, so that we may become less unworthy to partake of this holy Mass. Let us now humbly call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the, in the highest, highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all wild animals, but none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, or out of her man, this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in His ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. 
May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. May you see the children's children. Peace be upon Israel. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, He for a little while was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God He might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that He for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, it is not a shame to call them brothers. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer the two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, Whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, God has the best and the most beautiful plan for each one of us. 
Do you believe that? Are you personally convinced that God's plan for you is always the best, the most amazing, and the most beautiful? God could never plan anything bad. God could e not plan anything that could harm us, for that would be against the nature of God. Ang Dios ay mabuti, ang Dios ay kabutihan, at kahit kailan hindi gagawa ang Dios ng kahit anumang masama o ikapapahamak natin. Ang plano ng Diyos, ang kalooban ng Diyos para sa atin ay yung palaging pinakamabuti, pinakamaganda para sa atin. And this is proven to us by our readings this Sunday. In our Gospel, the Pharisees ask Jesus, about a very controversial issue even until today, the issue of divorce. Hanggang ngayon, pinag-uusapan pa rin ang isyong ito tungkol sa paghihiwalayan ng mag-asawa. And the Pharisees, ask, the Pharisees ask Jesus, is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife. Is divorce lawful? And Jesus asked them, What did Moses command you? Ano ba ang nasa utos ni Moises? And the Pharisees said, Well, Moses allowed divorce. And Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning, God made them male and female. From the very start, God planned that marriage will be forever. Never in the plan of God will there be any separation for any man and woman who committed themselves in marriage. Never in the plan of God, from the very beginning, would there be divorce. Maganda ang plano ng Diyos para sa babae at sa lalaki, sa simula at simula pa. But because of stubbornness, because of hardness of heart, that is why human beings instituted divorce. And so divorce is not part of God's plan. Divorce is part of humanity's stubbornness and hardness of heart. Sa magandang plano ng Diyos para sa sangkatauhan, ang mag-asawa ay nagsasama habang buhay. Pero dahil matigas ang puso at ulo ng tao, nasira ang magandang plano ng Diyos. Kaya ang tao ang nagpasimula ng mga batas upang paghiwalayin ang pinagsama ng Diyos. My dear brothers and sisters, God's plan is always beautiful. God's will is always perfect. Never will God commit any mistake. It is our stubbornness, our hardness of heart that destroys the beautiful plan of God for us. Hindi kailanman magkakamali ang Diyos. Dahil pag nagkamali siya, hindi na siya Diyos. Ang tao ang nagkakamali. Ang tao ang matigas ang ulo. Tayong tao ang matigas ang puso. At dahil sa ating katigasan ng puso at ulo, sinisira natin yung mabuting plano 
ng Diyos. This is true in marriage, which is the topic of our readings today. God has the most beautiful plan for the world, especially for marriage. From the very beginning, God has a beautiful plan for marriage. That is why our first reading today talks about creation. Sa simula't simula pa ng likain ng Diyos ang babae at lalaki, itinadhana sila ng Diyos na magsama habang buhay. Jesus even said in the Gospel, What God has joined together, no human being must separate. Ang pinagsama ng Diyos, huwag paghihiwalayin ng sino mang tao maging yung mag-asawa mismo. Maganda kasi yung plano ng Diyos. Ang Diyos ang nagbubuklod sa mag-asawa. Pero nasisira ang magandang plano ng Diyos dahil sa ating mga tao. Because of our infidelity, because of our lack of maturity, because of the lack of readiness, of preparedness in entering marriage, because of our selfishness and greed, we destroy God's beautiful plan. Para majustify ang ating katigasan ng ulo, ang ating kakulangan ng maturity, ang ating kakulangan ng kahandaan sa pagpasok sa buhay ng isang commitment panghabang buhay, gumagawa ang tao ng mga batas upang lumusot doon sa magandang plano ng Diyos. But Jesus said, in the beginning, this was not so. In the beginning, God has only the most beautiful dream for man and woman. From the very beginning, the man and woman who face God in marriage possess the beautiful dream and plan of God for them. Kaya huwag nating sasabing nagkamali yata ang Diyos dahil ikaw ang napang-asawa ko. Baka ikaw ang nagkamali, hindi ang Diyos. Towards the end of our gospel, Jesus asked that the children be brought to Him. Let the children come to me, Jesus said. Do not prevent them. Now, this is ju not just about physical proximity to Jesus. Hindi lamang sinasabi ni Jesus, ilapit ninyo sa akin ang mga bata. Ang sinasabi ni Jesus ay, hayaan ninyong ang plano ng Diyos ang siyang mamayani sa buhay ng inyong mga anak. You may have the most beautiful plan for your children. Bilang magulang, palagi namang maganda ang plano natin para sa ating mga anak. But Jesus said, let them come to me. Let them follow my will. Let them do what I want them to do. And do not hinder them. Huwag kayo ang haharang sa plano ng Diyos para sa, kanyo, sa inyong mga anak. Dahil aminin natin, ang plano ng Diyos para sa kanila ay mas maganda kaysa sa inaakala nating pinakamagandang plano natin para sa ating mga anak. And so to parents here, Jesus tells you, let your children come to me. Let them do the beautiful plan of God for them. Teach them 
to obey God's will for them and do not hinder them. Maganda yung plano ng Diyos sa ating mga anak, pero minsan, dahil sa katigasan ng ating ulo, dahil ipinagpipilitan natin yung gusto natin para sa kanila, hindi nila makita ang plano ng Diyos para sa kanilang buhay. Let us allow our children to discover God's will and God's plan for them and encourage them, help them to follow God's plan. God has the most beautiful plan for the world. He has created a beautiful, an orderly, and a good world. Ang nilikha ng Diyos na mundo ay isang napakagandang mundo. But because of human stubbornness, human hard-headedness, because of our sins, we destroy God's creation. Society changes from good to not so good, even to evil. Where is decency now? Where is honesty now? Where is true service now? Where is selflessness now? Where is love now in our society? Ang ganda-ganda ng mundo na ginawa ng Diyos para sa atin, pero nasisira dahil din sa ating katigasan ng ulo. Nang ang buti-buti ng mundo na ibinigay sa atin ng Diyos, pero sumasama hindi dahil sa Diyos, kundi dahil sa ating pagkukulang. Tomorrow, we will celebrate the feast of St. Francis of Assisi. He calls creation his brothers and sisters. And what have we done to the world given to us by God? What have we done to the orderly and clean world given to us by God? Because of our hard-headedness and stubbornness, we destroy God's beautiful creation. Walang malasakit sa mundo, kaya dumudumi ang ating kapaligiran. Hindi natin inaalagaan ang mga nilikha ng Diyos. My dear brothers and sisters, God's plan is always beautiful, always the best. But we destroy it because of our stubbornness. And so, when things in our life go wrong, let us not blame God. Let us blame ourselves. Huwag natin sabihin na sinisira ng Diyos ang buhay ko. Hindi gagawin ng Diyos yan dahil mabuti siya. Sino ang sumisira sa magandang plano ng Diyos? Tayo. Katigasan ng ating ulo, pagpupumilit natin sa ating gusto. That is why in our second reading today, we are given the example of Jesus and God's plan for Him. Jesus, for a little while, was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God, He might taste death for everyone. That is God's plan for Jesus. And by obeying God's plan, by obeying God's will, then Jesus brought something good for everyone, our salvation. Ipinakita ni Jesus na sa kanyang pagsunod sa magandang plano ng Diyos, nagkaroon ito ng mabuting bunga 
para sa ating lahat ang bunga ng kaligtasan. Kapag lumalabag tayo sa plano ng Diyos, nasisira ang lahat. Kapag sumusunod tayo sa plano ng Diyos, nagiging maganda ang bunga. My dear brothers and sisters, believe that God has a beautiful plan for the world. Believe that God has the best plan for our families, for our lives. And let us align ourselves to that beautiful dream and will of God for us. That is why when things in our life are going against our plans, it is probably because they are going according to the plan of God. Kapag yung mga plano natin sa mabuhay ay parang hindi nangyayari at iba ang nangyayari, baka dahil ang nangyayari ay yung plano ng Diyos. And so let us not resist. Let us simply trust because God's plan is always better. Please stand. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Husbands and wives share in God's creation of new life. Our intercessions today center around the needs of parents and children. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, the family of all the families of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the family of the human race, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For families broken by divorce or separation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the children, born or unborn, in our local community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our deceased relatives, call to their eternal home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who requested our prayers. We also pray for the intentions offered in this Mass. God of love, you created us, male and female, to continue your work of creation. Through our prayers for one another, may our love reflect your risen Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Thank you. 
understand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands. And through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you lay the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. You rule to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints 
who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pagdalo sa ating banal na misa ngayong umagang ito. Maraming salamat po sa pagpunta sa Manila Cathedral sa ating muling pagbubukas ngayong linggo. At uh, maraming salamat po sa inyong cooperation sa ating mga protocols na ipinatutupad. Maraming salamat din po sa ating mga kapatid na matsagang nagsimba dyan sa labas. Uh, 
Pasensya na po kayo kung meron tayong mga patakaran na pinasusunod bilang pagsunod din sa patakaran ng ating pamahalaan. Uh, especially those who are uh, not yet fully vaccinated. No? Alam po namin na uh, uh, nais ng lahat na makapasok pero ayaw, ayaw din naman po natin na makulong tayo, mahuli kami o pasarado kami dahil sa hindi namin pagsunod sa mga patakaran ng ating pamahalaan. Kaya po pasensya at uh, nawa po ay uh, uh, magtulong-tulong po tayo na gawin ang lahat para sa ating kaligtasan ngayong panahon ng pandemic. Salamat din po sa ating mga volunteers, sa servants and staff of the Manila Cathedral na naglilingkod sa ating misa ngayon. We also wish to thank our brothers and sisters who are joining the online live streaming of this Mass. Thank you for being part of our community. Thank you also to the different social media platforms sharing our Holy Mass this morning. And may God bless this new week. May God give us the grace so that we may always align our lives to His holy will. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. May He let His face shine upon you and show you His mercy now and forever. Amen. May He turn His countenance towards you and give you His peace now and forever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. I forgot to announce that our Blessed Souls Chapel is already open for Masses to be offered for our deceased brothers and sisters. The Blessed Souls Chapel will be open from today until November 9. Kaya sa mga nais pong mag-alay ng panalangin at misa para sa ating mga minamahal na yumao, maaari po tayong pumunta sa ating Blessed Souls Chapel sa bandang kanan nyo po, no, yung ating Blessed Souls Chapel. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Laging tapat at laging tugon Narito handa 